Hi students, welcome to lecture 41. So now we have reached the point where we can discuss endurance of jet powered aircraft. In the previous two lectures, we talked about the propeller aircraft and their endurance and range. And now we are at the point where we will discuss the jet powered aircraft and its endurance. I'm Dr. Ranjan Ganguly. So one of the things we discussed before is the specific fuel consumption for a propeller powered aircraft. And there we talked about C and now in the case of jet we are going to talk about C subscript T. So as far as jet engines are concerned they are rated in terms of thrust therefore the CT is also expressed in terms of thrust. So CT is defined as Newton of fuel divided by Newton of thrust into seconds and we can use this particular nomenclature to get the value for DW. So DW is essentially the amount of fuel which is being consumed or dissipated and this is equal to CT into TA into DT. So what I have done here is I have taken S as a measure of time that is seconds into DT. The Newton of trust has been taken into the available trust and CT is here and the negative sign simply means that this is decreasing because of course fuel is being expended by the jet engine so DW or the weight of the airplane is decreasing as you are going through time. So that is the physics behind this equation. So DW is the change in the weight of the airplane due to fuel consumption. So we can write this equation in terms of DT equals negative DW by CTTA. And this equation is going to help us get the value of time or endurance. So before we get there, let us look at the typical airplane. You already know the airplane starts out with a weight of W0, which is called the gross weight of the airplane. And at the end of the mission, it has a weight of W1, which is the weight of the airplane without fuel. So during this journey from point A to point B, this fuel is expended. The weight of the fuel is WF. And what happens is that the time elapsed during this period is T. So this is the range. We can convert it to the range when we integrate all these small segments dt here. So some equations come out of this weight nomenclature. We know that w1 would be equal to w0 minus wf or at the end of the journey, the weight is equal to the weight at the beginning of the journey minus the fuel weight. And this equation also immediately tells us that W0 is greater than W1 because W0 includes fuel, W1 does not include fuel. Now, one more nomenclature we had was W, which is the total weight of the airplane at a given time. And W is the fixed structural and payload weight minus the fuel weight. So essentially DWF is equal to DW and that was minus CT, TA, DT. So Essentially, when we say DW is same as TWF, we are making the point that the payload is fixed, the weight is fixed and so on. So hopefully, no payload is being thrown or jettisoned during the flight. In that case, you would need to consider that in these equations. So let's get back to this equation. Now we have a good understanding of the weights at the beginning and end of the journey. So therefore, I can take this equation for endurance and I can integrate it. So essentially dt has to be integrated from t equal to 0 where w is w0 and t equals to e where w is w1 and this is the integral e. So this will give me this value here w0 to w1 dw by cttta. Now this particular value we are going to expand it and simplify it because we want to now get closed form solution. So do recall that we are in steady level flight. So we are going to make that assumption that we are in steady level flight and therefore during this flight lift is equal to weight and thrust is equal to drag. So these are the basic equations. So we will also assume that T A is T R is T. So the pilot has enforced this condition and also weight equals to lift. So now from this equation, I can rewrite this equation in this form. So all I have done is I have substituted TA is D here. So I got this D here and I have multiplied the numerator and denominator both by W. So I got this W by W term. And also I have flipped this 
integral bound so essentially i have absorbed the negative sign inside so what has happened w0 has gone up and w1 has gone down so this is something we can do from calculus so now with this particular integral we make one more change we know that weight is equal to lift so i bring in this weight put lift here i take the drag i put it here and i put this w in the place of drag so by this rearrangement i get this nice looking equation here and now i have expressed things in terms of the weight w l by d ratio and 1 by ct so this is the integral we are going to try to do this integral is much more amenable for closed form solution so now we take a look at this integral here and we assume that ct is constant and cl by cd is constant and if we do that we can drag these two terms out from the integral to outside it and then we are left with dw by w now you know from calculus the derivative or rather the integral of that is log of w and so i get log of w0 by w1 when i put these two bounds here so this is the natural log to the base e so this is the closed form solution for endurance of a jet airplane now we try to always look at the math model and see what we can extract out of the model this is one of the fundamentals in any kind of engineering research or study so we look at this and let's say how we could maximize e we can of course see we could minimize ct which would mean that i minimize the truss specific fuel consumption so that is a driver of the engine technology and so on I would also want to fly at maximum L by D or maximum CL by CD. So again, that is something which is coming out of the aerodynamic design. And then the weight component I'm going to look at in the next slide. So if we look at the weight part here, we will see that this W0 by W1 is always going to be more than one because W0 is greater than W1. So if I were to plot this, here I have plotted W0 by w1 versus log of w0 by w1 starting from 1 so this always goes up like this so essentially i want this value to go up and for this value to go up what i need to do i need to have a higher value of fuel weight so the higher value of fuel weight will ensure that this particular endurance keeps going up now of course there are limits to that in terms of the structures in terms of cost in terms of the aerodynamic performance and so on but it is something which comes out of common sense that you need to have a bigger fuel tank if you want to have more endurance that's something you would even know if you are somebody who drives a car or an suv or a truck or something like that so now let's again take a look at the equation from this equation we can see that subject to the various assumptions we have made the endurance is not a function of density and therefore it should not be a function of altitude therefore if i am flying the aircraft at sea level or i am flying it at some high tier edge the endurance of the aircraft should not be impacted because those things are not directly coming into the equation here so just to recapitulate today we looked at the specific fuel consumption ct and this was defined in terms of trust so this is what is used for the jet engines previously we used the c for the propeller engines and that was defined in terms of power which was joule per second here so in that case we were able to get the expression for range for a propeller aircraft as this and now we get the expression for endurance for a jet aircraft like this now these two equations look somewhat similar but there are some differences here the efficiency of the propeller is coming in here now if you look at the units you will see that cl cd all these are dimensionless w0 by w1 so the unit of this is governed completely by ct and the unit of ct is actually newton by newton and second here so 1 by ct so 1 by ct means the endurance is coming out in seconds if we see here you will see that this is joule per second into second or this is essentially joule that is newton into meter newton newton cancel out so you get one by meter and that goes up so range comes out in meter so essentially these are all dimensionally consistent values for the propeller aircraft you should use c which is defined in terms of power and for the jet aircraft you use ct which is defined in terms of 
contrast and you get the similar looking formulas but the answers are in terms of different units so finally to summarize we'll see that the different endurance and range of different aircraft are given here so for the propeller we obtained in the previous two classes range is given by this thing in yellow endurance in this box in green and for a jet the endurance is given by this box in yellow here so you can clearly see there is some analogy between the endurance equation and the range equation for the jet and the propeller respectively so in both these cases cl by cd has to be maximized during the flight so that is the driver as far as the aircraft performance is concerned if you want to maximize endurance you have to fly it such that cl by cd gets maximized for the jet and for the propeller again you want to maximize range you want to fly it at the point where cl by cd gets maximized for the propeller so now the thing which remains is range of the jet and that is this equation here that's something quite different it's directly related to cl half by cd and we are going to derive this in our next lecture so this is an interesting question i have for you that in case you know about different type of aircraft try to figure out are there jet aircraft which are designed for endurance driven missions so that's something which is interesting to know i stop this video now i will see you in my next video when we are going to talk about the jet aircraft again and then we are going to discuss range which is a very important problem because most often jet aircraft are used to fly between two cities and sometimes two cities can be very far away so you can even travel today from bangalore to san francisco for example in a direct flight i'll end this video now and i will see you in my lecture soon see you then